Hey guys, so this is going to be a pick a deck reading. We have three decks here from left to right. This will be deck one, which is the Everyday Witch Tarot with a little bird's nest ornament. Number two is Tarot of Klimt. It's a tarot deck um, that is a take on the artwork of Klimt. And then there's a little orange car on that one. The third deck is the Cosmic Tarot. And this is a big chunk of green calcite here. Um, and so the question is, what are each of you projecting onto each other? And then what's the reality? So in other words, you know, what do you think is true um, about this person? Um, and then what is the reality? I don't know. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started with number one. The timestamps are going to be in the description area and also in the top of the comments. So let's clear the space here for reading number one. Okay, say so we're gonna look at what they what you're projecting, but also we'll look at what um, they're projecting onto you. So we'll look at both sides here. Okay, so what are you projecting onto this person? We get the Seven of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Strength card. So I feel like you're projecting onto this person that they have a lot of options or that perhaps they don't know which option they want to choose. Um, I think you're projecting onto them something about what they hope to happen here. And you might be projecting that they have more courage than, that, than they actually do or more strength than they actually do. Let's look more into it. So this is what you're projecting. So what is the reality? The Nine of Cups. The Four of Wands. And then the Four of Pentacles. So you're projecting that they have a lot of choices choices, and that perhaps they're confused or even emotionally overwhelmed by the choices available to them. In reality, they're very happy. I feel like this person has already gotten beyond the act of making a choice. They already know what their choice is, and they're totally at peace with that choice. Um, I do see a crab here. There might be a lot of cancer energy with this person, maybe sun, ascendant, or rising, or maybe just crab is a spirit animal that's significant to you or symbolic to you in some way. Um, but I am getting, getting the message, like with cancerian people, it can be confusing. It's easy to project on them onto these people that they haven't made a choice yet because they do tend to move sideways towards their goal. They are not someone who's very um, courageous per se. You know, they're pretty timid. They're really afraid of letting people into their shell. Uh, and so they move towards what they want very cautiously. Um, so yeah, but this person knows what they want. They have already decided and they feel very, again, very satisfied with their choice. So you're also projecting on them that perhaps this person doesn't quite know what they want um, again, or they don't know what the, what the best outcome would be for them. But here we have the four of wands. So the reality is they actually want some kind of celebration. It could be a wedding. Um, the four of wands often indicates wedding, so perhaps they want to be married. Um, it also could indicate just someone who wants to celebrate some milestone moment in their life. So celebration is what they want. So they're not, you might also think that this person is just totally leaving the situation up to fate or chance. But with the Four of Wands, we can see that that is not the case. This is someone who is doing um, a lot of planning and implementing um, with the wands energy, there's a lot of action taking place in order to get to this point. So this person is not just making decisions here, but they're, they are also taking some action. So no, they're not just letting fate or destiny do its work. They are taking action as well. And finally, you might see this person as very courageous. 
Um, you know, someone who's not afraid of the unknown, but with the Four of Pentacles, I, I feel like the truth here is that this person is a lot more reserved and held back than what you realize. Okay, so that's what I'm getting in terms of what you're projecting and what the reality is. So what is this person projecting onto you? So what are they projecting onto you? We get the Ten of Cups. They are thinking that you... Um, you know, you want a happy family life. They're projecting that onto you. The Ace of Cups, they see you as someone who's extremely loving. Uh, maybe someone who's caught up a little bit in the fantasy of love, but not in a negative way. Um, someone whose cup is overflowing with love, and you can see how the water is pouring out of that cup. And it's watering this little, uh, these two little plants here. They're growing side by side, so... They see you as someone whose heart overflows with love uh, to the point where you are not only feeling your own cup, but you're feeling the cups of other people. So right, so far their projection, projection, ah, projections, <laughs> what they're projecting onto you is very positive. And finally, the justice card. They see you as someone who is often very right, um, maybe someone who has a good understanding of karma or justice. Someone who can resolve conflicts easily. So this is what they're projecting and what is the what's the reality then? So the reality is the moon card. So maybe they see you as being very certain of this ten of cups outcome. They feel like you're very certain that you are going to achieve your ultimate happiness in life. The reality is that you have a lot of fear, so they also are not quite seeing how fearful you are. They, they think you're a lot um, more, maybe more optimistic, optimistic than what you truly are. Okay, and they also saw you as someone whose heart is overflowing with love. Uh, and that's not to say that that is not true, but the reality is that you are the magician, you know, you are you are trying to you are trying to achieve a certain outcome and it might very it may very well be this 10 of cups outcome that you want to achieve. And you aren't just uh loving and letting your heart overflow. That's not your only um that's not your only means to get to what this goal is. You are also someone who is taking action. You're using all of the resources available to you with the swords. You're someone who needs to gain clarity. With the cups, you do. You are a very emotionally oriented person and you can utilize your emotions in this process as well. You're also someone with the pinnacle here who knows how to utilize finances um, and work with the material world in order to support whatever dream that you're building for yourself. And with the wands, you have that access to spirit, um, that access to inspiration. So you aren't just daydreaming. You know, that was part of this as well. They might see you as a bit of a daydreamer, but you're not. You are someone who actually is putting those dreams and visions, um, making those a reality. You're someone who's capable of doing that and who is doing that. So for the final card, this Justice card, what do we have? We have the Queen of Cups. So they're seeing you perhaps as someone who's very logical and rational, who's weighing out the pros and cons of things. Um, but really you're more focused, you know, they had it right to some extent with this Ten of Cups and Ace of Cups. Um, you are definitely more interested rather than there being some kind of karmic justice here or even earthly justice you're not really as interested in that as you are in just you know being a loving person uh maybe giving people the benefit of the doubt you know extending your love and kindness to other people 
so maybe they're not seeing that. Maybe they're not seeing the acts of love that you are bestowing on people. Um, and so what they're seeing instead is maybe an act of justice instead, like putting someone in their place, that kind of thing. All right, so that was a quick and easy reading. I do want to just uh, pull one card from the Keepers of the Light Oracle jet deck just to give you a little bit more guidance about your involvement with this person, whoever this is that you're asking about. And we get Serapis Bay, Ascension. Move into your true self. Rise above the darkness. The light is here interesting. Let's see what the book says about Serapis Bay. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. Okay, the message is, the stars cannot shine without darkness. You may have experienced a low state of being, trauma, or depression, but this is a new beginning. Becoming Become aware of growth. There is always room for improvement. There's also a sense of presentation now. You may be receiving documentation or certification to acknowledge your growth or experience. It's important to cherish this time and to realize that without the challenges or obstacles you have faced, you wouldn't be as strong, powerful, or focused as you are today. You are ascending personally and spiritually at this time, and the universe is here to support it. So I think that was a really beautiful message. Again, that was just a real quick reading for you guys. Um, if you chose number one, let me know what you thought about it in the comments there. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to reading number two. Okay, so reading number two was the, the Tarot of Klimt and the little toy orange car. Um, so we're going to be looking here at what are you projecting onto them and also what are they projecting onto you and then what is the reality. <clears throat> so what's being projected from both sides here? And if we could see what is the less distorted version of that projection, what would that be? Okay, so first, what are they projecting onto you? We get the Eight of Wands. So they, they think that you're someone who maybe is flirty, um, also someone who's like a mover and a shaker, perhaps a social butterfly. You, they see you as that. Um, also someone who can maybe have a lot of different things going on at once and all of those things, you know, still you're still managing to succeed with all of those things even though you've got a lot going on. Um, the next card here is the Nine of Cups. So they see you as someone who's very happy, very satisfied with life. And finally, what are they projecting onto you? We have the Six of Pentacles. So they see you as someone who has a good balanced give and take. You can give and receive uh, equally. Um, they see you as someone who's quite generous. All right, so those are very positive projections, uh, but they are still projections. So what is the reality here? We get the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so they're seeing you as someone who is like maybe working on a lot of different projects. Maybe your energy is very scattered and they don't see you necessarily as very focused. I don't think that they see this as a negative thing because they see you again as like getting a lot accomplished. But what they don't see here um, is that you're actually in the Ace of Pentacles energy, which means there might be a particular project that you're working on that really might be the umbrella for all of the other projects. So maybe some larger goal that they don't realize is your true intention to work towards. Um, or they're just not seeing that one of these projects is especially important to you above all others. 
Maybe they also don't see, um, they might also see you just being involved in a lot of different things and not being very stable or grounded, but they don't see that actually you are quite grounded uh, in reality. All right. And then for the Nine of Cups, they were seeing you as someone who's quite happy. Okay, and we ha actually have three cards com coming out here. I'm just going to take them. Um, we get the Nine of Swords, the Ace of Cups, and the Death card. So they're seeing you as the Nine of Cups, which is very happy, satisfied, everything's going great. You're really in the night. The reality is you're someone who really stresses out a lot. Um, you might not always show it because you're trying to extend love and kindness to other people and make them feel okay. So they're not seeing how, like, you're actually in a lot of agony here. Um, you know, and you come across as happy perhaps because you want everyone to be okay. You know, you, um... You know, you allow your pain to be sort of hidden, uh, is what I'm getting. But you do have, you like, you have a lot of emotional depth that perhaps this person doesn't quite see. They see the happiness, your emotional happiness, but they're not seeing the torment. They're not seeing, you know, they're not seeing that perhaps you've been dragged through hell to a certain extent in life. Maybe they don't know that part of your life. All right, so they're not really seeing the truth of your experience, and they don't quite see your inner world either in terms of, you know, the heartache um, and turmoil that you experience. All right, and finally, they were seeing you as someone who's generous and has a really good balanced uh, give and take, someone who can give but also freely receive. So let's see. That's their projection, and what is the reality? The reality is judgment. Okay, so you might be someone who gives and receives, but you don't just give to anyone, you know, who comes along. You have good powers of judgment. You, you, you know, some people you deem worthy of your generosity and some people you don't. So maybe they don't see that. They just see you being nice to everyone and they don't realize that you're actually pretty choosy about who you extend your generosity to. All right, so those were, um, so that's what they are projecting onto you. So let's look at what you are projecting onto them. What are you projecting onto them? This, the moon. Okay, and we, got, we get both of these connected. The moon, the knight of swords, and the king of pentacles. So you're projecting onto them um, a real emotional depth um, or some issues about the past that just aren't reality. Let's go ahead and see what the reality is so maybe we can get a, a better understanding of what the moon card represents here. We get the Four of Swords. So you think they're actually having a difficult time, like maybe you're seeing them as kind of sad forlorn, depressed, um, all caught up in their emotions, having some kind of emotional upheaval. But the reality is they're actually quite peaceful. They're resting easily. Um, you might see them having troubled sleep or something like that, but they're resting very well. They're sleeping soundly. They feel calm and content. They feel pretty okay with life, actually. And with the Knight of Swords, you see them as someone who's very discerning, someone who's very intellectual, someone who maybe is more into their intuitive knowing than their, or I'm sorry, into their rational way of knowing rather than their intuitive way. Uh, okay, so actually this is the Knave of Swords, which is the Page of Swords. So it's similar, but a little bit different. And the reality is that they are the Knight of Swords. So... Maybe you are seeing them as someone who, or I'm sorry, this is how they're, let me see. This is how they're seeing you. I'm getting this confused. I hope you're getting something out of this anyway. Um, so they're, let me see. 
Now I've confused myself. I think we started out with seeing what they were projecting onto you, right? Um, yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm sorry for those of you who chose number two. I've confused myself, but I feel like this is um, what you're projecting onto them. That's how I started this part of the reading, so I'm just gonna keep going with that. And hopefully you're getting a helpful message out of this. Um, but I think you're seeing them as someone who maybe is trying, they they are looking for answers. The You're seeing them as someone who has a lot of curiosity and who wants to know more before they make any sort of action or decisions. But with the Knight of Swords, the reality is this person has already made their decision. I feel like they already know everything that they need to know here. And they are already proceeding based on the knowledge that, that they do have about you, I think. Finally, you see them as the King of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles, I often see as like the husband card. But it's also just, you know, the this is the King of, um, you know, the suit of Earth. So this is someone who's very grounded. Um, they've... Uh, achieved significantly in the material world. They have a lot of material stability. Um, this is someone who also, you know, they, uh, you know, in terms of their wealth, they like to share it with other people. They um, especially like a sense of community and family. So they like to make sure that their community is also well served. It isn't just about their own selfish personal needs. So that's how you're seeing them, which is nice. And then what is the, so that's the projection. What's the reality? The Knight of Wands. So actually this person may not be as rooted and grounded um, or have this, the firm foundations that you think, or maybe their, their goals in life are just not quite you, what you are projecting. Because this is someone who actually really wants to get out and explore the world more. They want to get out and explore and see the world, try new things, travel. So they're not necessarily, it's not that maybe that they aren't this King of Pentacles energy in some way, but the rea reality is much more in line with being adventurous and having unique and enlightening experiences in life. It isn't just about creating safety for themselves and other people. They don't necessarily always want to be safe. The Knight of Wands um, enjoys getting into sticky situations. All right, so thanks for your patience through that. I know that was a little choppy. Um, finally, I'm gonna pull a card from the Keepers of the Light Oracle deck. And for you, it is Holy Amethyst, Divine Alchemy. It says, move beyond current challenges. Focus on what you desire. All right. And let's see what the book says for Holy Amethyst. It says, you are ready to move beyond energies or situations that are no longer helpful to you and make space in your life for something more purposeful. You may feel a real need for clearing out, not just mentally or emotionally, but physically too. There is a sense that you are moving beyond challenges and forging golden opportunities from stagnant or unhappy experiences. It's important to recognize that you are like a magician at this time with the ability to use your thoughts will and actions to bring about life fulfilling and dream enhancing opportunities. It's important to focus on what you desire and not what you fear because what you give your energy to will literally begin to flourish. Call on Holy Amethyst to help you focus on golden opportunities. All right, so I hope that that uh, reading was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to Reading number three. All right, so reading number three was the 
Cosmic Tarot deck and the green calcite. So we're going to be looking at what you are projecting onto them and what's the reality. And then we're going to look at what they are projecting onto you and what's the reality. And then, uh, and then we'll get uh, Keepers of the Light Oracle card to give you just a little bit more guidance. Okay. So actually, I'm going to start. I confused myself in the last reading, but I'm going to start with how what what are they projecting onto you? So so we'll start with them. They're projecting a Seven of Pentacles, Nine of Wands. Okay, and five of pentacles. So overall, they are definitely seeing you as someone who's really struggling right now. Maybe someone who's facing a lot of obstacles. Someone who's really needing to make a reassessment of their life. So that's how they're seeing you. And, you know, they do see you as someone who can overcome anything, you know, because they see you as someone who's overcome a lot and continues to persevere. Okay, so that's what they're projecting. What's the reality? We have the Five of Swords, the Two of Swords, and the Ten of Swords. So I feel like they're not totally off the mark. You are like in a difficult place. So they, what they're projecting is not totally um, off from reality. Um, so I feel like you feel maybe perhaps a little bit overextended It seems like the major obstacle you have right now with the Two of Swords is perhaps making a decision. You might be at a crossroads in life and you're needing to choose one of two paths. Or perhaps you've already chosen the path. Uh, but regardless, you're like feeling pretty anxious. Um, you know, the Ten of Swords is about, it's similar to the Death card. Um, perhaps even in some ways more painful. Uh, someone commented, I guess this card must have come up from this particular deck in another of my reading, and someone commented that this, this is the ugliest card they've ever seen. I have to agree, it's not that pretty to look at, and, you know, and the Ten of Swords experience is not very pretty either. It is a difficult experience. Um, but, you know, just like with the Death card, you know, this experience is bringing... Uh, you to a new journey in life. So something has to end in order for this new beginning to start. So you're on the precipice, I think, of a new beginning. Um, so yeah, this person is seeing you pretty clearly. I don't think they're projecting too much onto you, actually. All right. So that's what they're projecting, and that's the reality. And let's see what you are projecting onto them and what the reality is. So what are you projecting onto them? The Four of Pentacles, the Star, and the Eight of Wands. So with the Four of Pentacles, they might see that you are in a situation that you've boxed yourself into, that perhaps you are feeling unwilling to, um, to get yourself out of, or maybe they see you as just very content. You know, the Four of Pentacles it symbolizes someone who is not either not willing or not ready to take a certain risk. Um, you know, all of the Four cards are about stability, so... Um, you might be seeing them as someone who just really wants stability above all else to the, to the point that maybe they are not willing to take any action. Um, but you're also seeing some, them as someone who has, uh, you know, has a light, you know, this is per someone you see them as having like a divine light or access to divine uh, divine love and light and that this person is meant to, in your opinion, your projection is that this person is meant to move beyond, you know, just our humdrum mundane reality. Um, 
because you see them as someone who can really bring divine energies into the world if they were willing to go there. You also see them, I think, as someone who, um, who is brave. Um, you know, you see them being unwilling, perhaps, to take action or take to take risks. But you also are projecting onto them that this is someone who, if they were willing to do that, they would be very successful. So that's what you're projecting onto them. What is the reality? We get the Seven of Cups. Okay. The Six of Cups. And the Eight of Swords. I feel like I have another card. The Five of Pentacles also wants to come up. And the Prince of Cups. So, they... Move that back a little bit. They, um, so this is what you're seeing them as. Someone who's reserved, but if they moved beyond those reservations, they would bring a lot of light and love into the world and that they could be very courageous in doing so. Uh, maybe very outspoken. That's what you're seeing. The reality is, you know, I don't think this person is n not acting or... They're not stuck in mundane reality per se. They, you know, this is someone who has a very vivid fantasy world, like a vivid imagination. Um, you can even see here, like this person is kind of caught up in their imagination, although they are in that grounded, four earthy energy of the four of pentacles. Their mind still wanders, and so they're not. Um, they 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 are not as stuck in mundane reality. Or like the 3D reality that maybe you think. This is someone who has a very rich inner world. Um, and their inner world is sort of confusing to them emotionally at times. You know, you're seeing them as someone who can bring this divine gift into the world. And... Um, the reality is that I think the way that they want to bring that is through loving personal relationships. So it isn't so much that they want to bless the world with their love, but they do like to bless people on an individual level with their love. That's how they like to bring that light in, is to get to know people on um, a real one-to-one -one basis and extend their love and kindness to people. You know, you see them as someone who's very courageous and who could be outspoken. Um, the reality is that this person has a lot of mental hang-ups and they don't, ex they actually don't express themselves very often or very outspokenly. Because um, they feel very uncertain about whether or not people will accept their truth. Um, whether people will accept the truth of who they are. So I'm getting a lot of Cups cards here. We get the Five of Pentacles and the Prince of Cups, finally. Uh, I mean, I feel like this is someone who's been through a lot of struggles in life. They might even view life as just a series of struggles in a way. And it's almost like to them, like the way that they cope with it is to really be fully engaged with their inner emotional life. Um, so you may not be seeing how, how deep their emotions do run and how intensely emotional this person is. All right, so finally, I'm going to pull an oracle card from the Keepers of the Light oracle deck. And we get Isis, Magic Manifesting. Your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming a reality. Stay focused. So that's pretty nice. Let me read from the book what Isis has to say to us. You are moving into a space where your dream reality is becoming your outward reality. Well, that's fantastic because this is all about the dream reality versus the outward reality. So that's interesting. 
You're moving into a space where your dream reality is becoming your outward reality. This is an extremely powerful time and it's vital to keep focused on the highest good of all. You no longer want to relive your own history and or feel unsupported. Acknowledging where you once were and how you have changed that situation around is a powerful focus of gratitude that will align you with universal abundance. Discipline and commitment are important now. Consider that you are moving between worlds when you daydream or create visions and bring life-enhancing ideas into reality. Magic is manifesting all around you. This is exciting. So I think for those of you who want, who are watching, this ISIS message seems to be more about kind of explaining, you know, that message is for you as well, but I think it's kind of trying to explain to you where this other person is coming from and their experience. Um, you know, that they're, they really are envisioning a certain kind of reality and their visions are coming to life. All right, so let me know, those of you who chose the third reading, what you thought of that in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so. And I hope you have a great day, guys. Goodbye.